Hello, hello. This is going to be a tournament report for a GOAT format tournament that I played in this past weekend. I played in the GOAT Grand Prix New England, which was held in Connecticut. Um, I believe there were 58 players, and it was six rounds of Swiss. Um, I did make top 16. I actually placed 16th after Swiss, uh, which was super awesome. Um, and let me show you the deck that I played. I played, you guessed it, Reasoning Gate. Um, this main deck is the same exact main deck as in some of my other deck profiles. Um, the only real difference was that, well, it's actually a big difference. Um, the side deck is quite different from some of my previous videos and my siding strategy was very different. I'll talk about that in a second, but, um, you can see I'm playing Sinister Serpent, which I know <laughs> is a very controversial card in Reasoning Gate for a couple of reasons. Um, but I decided to play Sinister Serpent because this is the build I like the most and am comfortable with the most. And um, it was a really interesting experience for me because in the week leading up to the Grand Prix, I was playing an FLC 26, I believe, FLC 26. And I had been working on this deck with a couple other uh, GOAT community um, players namely Pui and Fancy Diesel. And we had landed on a main deck that did not have Sinister Serpent in it and was a little bit more turbo and glass cannon. Um, let me see if I have it. Um, I believe this is it. So um, it's running things like multiple Jar of Greeds, um, cut, cut down on the Dimension Fusion, cut down on the Metamorphosis, no Sinister Serpent, uh, Ring in the Main, um, swords in the main and I think we all played very similar main decks if not the same exact main deck and um, I did quite poorly <laughs> uh, by the end of round six I was three and three um, I ended up dropping out to play because I needed to play in the Grand Prix but I did quite poorly um, but it was a very very insightful experience for me to watch how fancy and uh, Pui played and what their what their um, play style was like. And I noticed that my play style is just very different from theirs and very different from Pui's um, in that I have like a more moderate, um, a more moderate play style where I try to, you know, gain some advantage um, a little bit more gradually. Um, whereas Pui plays very all or nothing with this deck anyway, in that, um, I found I found out that she was she would pass um, in situations where I would not necessarily pass like pass with a completely open board. She would hold like reasonings or scapegoats or monster gates in situations where I would not necessarily hold them, and she would basically just pass and take a lot of damage and then just turn things around in one turn with a huge push, a huge OTK, which is how a lot of people play this deck and definitely um, definitely a viable way to play this deck. Um, if not the most common way to play this deck, but it really doesn't suit my play style that much. I like to have a little bit more control and um, not try to go for um, just one huge single push. Uh, rather, I like to go for multiple pushes over time. Um, and, you know, I still go for the Dimension Fusion play, but I like to uh, have, you know, a more uh, moderate approach. So um, Pui actually did really well in the first five rounds, I think she ended up X3, uh, but at least by the end of the fifth round, I think she was 5-0, and and watching her play style with this build, um, it definitely made sense why, um, you know, she was having a lot of success, and why I was not, not doing so great. <laughs> um, so, basically, it was a learning experience for me to realize that I don't really like this type of turbo glass cannon build as much as I like a more um, moderate build. Uh, one that's running Sinister Serpent. So I went back to the Sinister Serpent build, um, and my main goal for the Grand Prix was, one, not to scrub out, <laughs> uh, which is always my goal, um, but two, specifically to showcase the power of Sinister Serpent in this build, because I know it's a very controversial card, and I know it turns a lot of heads when people see that I'm playing this, especially in Reasoning Gate, but I wanted to show people exactly how powerful and beneficial Serpent could be. And I think I did exactly that. Um, 
most notably in my round four against James Ark, where uh, basically we were top decking and having a Sinister Serpent online um, basically allowed me to win. Um, you know, Sinister Serpent, Sinister Serpent does make uh, Monster Gate worse because you're less likely to hit things like Crane and Demok, but it does make your reasoning significantly better in that your opponent is never going to call one, right? They're never going to call one. And it makes your first turn reasoning better, which is something that I don't like about this deck, the fact that it has a very weak first turn play. Um, and there were multiple times throughout the tournament where I would activate reasoning on my first turn, hit Sinister Serpent, and basically just have it online for the rest of the tournament. You know, whenever I top deck Monster Gates or whenever I top deck Metamorphoses, I had a Serpent online to be able to use its fodder. Um, whereas in the more Turbo Glass cannon build, like, I think you'll often find times where you have dead Monster Gates or dead Metamorphoses. Um, so that's why I like to play Serpent. Okay, I'm going to really quickly talk about the side deck because my siding strategy coming into this tournament was a lot different than in the past. Um, you can see here I'm running some spice in the form of double Vampire of the Lord. This is some theory crafting I did with Pui and, and Fancy. Pui originally planted the idea in my head of running a Vampire Lord. I believe she got it from someone else, but I forget who what their name was. Um, but the idea here is that when you're playing against warriors specifically, it's very hard to pull off your combo. Um, they're running, you know, triple judgment and triple kaiku. Kaiku makes it so that it's going to be very hard for you to summon a chaos monster. Um, and then even if you do summon the chaos monster, you need to have dimension fusion as well. Uh, warriors do a very good job of getting your life pretty low, pretty quick. So odds are you're not going to have, you know, above 2000 life when you um, successfully summon your chaos monster and have dimension fusion in your hand and then even if you do have above 2000 life they have multiple solemn judgments right like they have one solemn judgment for every dimension fusion that you have um which you're basically just fighting a really really uphill battle to pull off the combo so the idea was to side out um many if not all of the chaos monsters as well as the dimension fusions uh and put in cards that just help you basically outpace warriors so put in double vampire lord you're more likely to get your reasoning call reasoning calls correct um vampire lord is also just really hard for warriors to out because they can't use things like sakuretsu or ring or mirror force or torrential exiled force uh they're really really their only out is dd warrior lady or like attacking with a 2000 attack blade knight which is a really suboptimal play uh Usually what they'll do is they'll try to set a DD Warrior Lady and get you to attack into it. Um, but the plan is bring in the, the Vampire Lords, bring in the Swords, Brain Control, Delinquent, uh, Torrential Mirror Force, Ring, maybe one or two Roll Decrees, and um, basically just beat down your opponent. Just turn the game plan into big monster beatdown with like Jinzo and Vampire Lord, um, and just basically outpace them and make it hard for them to get rid of your cards. Um, so I'll talk more about that later, but that game plan worked out really well. Um, and now I'll just jump right into um, the recap of how the different rounds went. So again, there were six rounds, six rounds of Swiss. Uh, my first round was against Go Control. It was just straight up Go Control, like almost OG Provic Go Control, except it obviously wasn't running Xerion's. It was running like Exiled Force, um, but it was pretty much just you know, uh, vanilla go control. Um, literally the first, literally the first game of the tournament, I, I completely bricked. I opened up triple dimension fusion and two chaos sorcerers. And then I just kept drawing things that were dead, like monster gate, um, true nade and pre mat. And I, I basically just had to pass with a completely open board for like three or four turns straight. And I just lost game two was a little bit more interesting. Um, I had very few cards left in my deck, and my life was, I think, 2,900 to his 3,600. Um, my field was full of goat tokens, and he had a spirit reaper, which I was having a hard time dealing with. And I literally had four cards left in my deck, and um, they could have easily, easily just, you know, kept passing and waited for me to deck out, but they were being really nice for, for whatever reason, and... Um, <laughs> they said that they didn't want to be a degen and just 
pass and lose by deck out, which if you're watching next time, just just take the win, right? Like <laughs> you don't have to be nice. You don't have to be nice when you're playing uh, <laughs> competitively. But um, they were being nice by like clearing my my go tokens and and um, you know attacking when they really didn't need to. But at some point um, when I had like four cards left, he summoned a Mobius, um, which has 2,400 attack, right? And two out of the four cards left in my deck were Rig of Destruction and BLS. So I basically just waited until I had BLS and Ring of Destruction. I attacked over his Mobius and then I ringed. I was under 3,000 life, but he was at exactly 3,000 life after I attacked with BLS and we tied game two. And then in game three, I just straight up lost. So I started I started off the tournament with a, a loss, um, which was a little bit demoralizing. But um, like four out of the five people that I went to the tournament with also lost round one. So um, that made it a little bit better. Game two, nothing really to talk about here. I won 2-0, I believe, against uh, Chaos Turbo deck. I believe the player was a little bit newer and less experienced, so that was basically um, that, that was pretty straightforward. Game three, I won 2-0 as well. I played against um, you know that Cold Wave Last Will Earth Aggro Monarch deck that I believe James Arc created or helped create. Um, basically, their game plan is use Cold Wave, then tribute their monster for um, the Earth Monarch Grandmark pop pop your back row or your monster and also use last will to bring out like uh cyberstein or injection fairy lily or whatever and uh maybe also summon gigantes and just just beat you to death right um i got lucky because he went first and he did not know what i was playing so he ended up discarding cold wave off of graceful charity um and basically i i i otk'd him on my my first or second turn uh, because he had not cold waved me, so I got I got pretty lucky that he didn't know I was playing. And then game two, um, also won that one. Um, I did make a misplay, but it, it did not end up uh, costing me the game. So that was a pretty straightforward two zero against that. Uh, round four was the most the most interesting round in the tournament by far, and maybe one of the craziest matches I've ever played. Um, I was playing against James Ark, who was playing Chaos Turbo. And I really wish I had recorded that match because it was honestly absolutely insane. Game one was not that crazy. Um, I think he got a good trap death shoot on me, um, but he he won game one pretty pretty uh, pretty straight up. Game two, I pulled off a wombo combo with Dimension Fusion. I ended up with a board of like Demok, Air Knight, Jinzo, Sacred Crane, and I think I made uh, I think I made Dark Blade as well to banish some of his uh, monsters. And uh, he basically couldn't come back from that. But game three is where things got like super crazy. Um, basically, the last round, the last, sorry, the last eight turns of that game was some of the craziest top decking I have ever seen in my life. Um, so what happened? Um, what happened was he had a field of uh, Spirit Reaper and a face down monster. And he was punishing the fuck out of me with Spirit Reaper, discarding cards in my hand, um, which which is crazy. Um, at that point, I was top decking, but I had a Sinister Serpent online. I don't believe he was top decking. He probably had like one or two cards in his hand, but he was just, you know, beating 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 the fuck out of me with Spirit Reaper. So I I I, I was top decking. What I did was I top decked a BLS. And I needed to banish his face down because he had a stacked, stacked grave with like a pot of greed and graceful charity in there. So I could not risk his face down being a magician of faith. So I summoned Black Luster Soldier and banished his face down. I left the Spirit Reaper on the field. And it's really ironic. I literally made a video about whether you should put BLS in attack or defense mode. And I ended up putting it in attack mode. Um, his grave had no lights in it. It only had one dark. And um, my thought process was that he had not yet used Thunder Dragon, so he had a pretty high chance. I, I suspected he had a Chaos Monster, and he had a pretty high chance of drawing into Thunder Dragon. Uh, and if my BLS was in defense mode, and he had a BLS, he could attack over my BLS and attack me directly for 3,000, um, 
which you know would have been really unfortunate or it wasn't attack directly sorry i had a sinister serpent face down i think um but i didn't want to risk him attacking over my bls with his bls what ended up happening was he had an Asura Priest, or he top-decked an Asura Priest, attacked into my attack position BLS, loaded up his grave with a light and dark, and dropped a Chaos Sorcerer in main phase 2 to banish my BLS. So at this point, I'm top-decking, and I have a Serpent online. On my turn, I top-decked a Mind Control, took his Chaos Sorcerer and banished it, uh, and set my Sinister Serpent. Then on his turn, he top decked Thunder Dragon finally, because he hadn't used it yet, got the other two Thunder Dragons, tributed his Spirit Reaper to attack my Sinister Serpent. Then on my turn, I top decked a Metamorphosis, and I had a Serpent to use it with. I used it to take his to make a Thousand Eyes and take his Thunder Dragon and attack him directly for 1600. Then on his turn, he top decked Tribe Infecting Virus and pitched the other Thunder Dragon that he had his hand to blow up my Thousand Eyes and attack me directly for 1600. And then on my turn, finally, I top decked Dimension Fusion and was able to bring back the banished BLS and a Sacred Crane and attack him for game. So it was literally the craziest series of top decks back and forth. You know, he topped a Chaos Sorcerer, I topped like Mind Control, he topped a Thunder Dragon, I topped like Meta, he topped a Tribe, I topped like Dimension Fusion. Um, so it was some of the most back and forth gameplay I have ever seen, and it was super hype. But um, basically, Sinister, Serp Sinister Serpent ended up winning me that game, um, both because I had a monster that I could keep setting to block attacks, and also because I eventually topped like the Metamorphosis. Um, so that was absolutely crazy. Um, round five, I played against Warriors. It was 2-1. Um, it was almost 2-0, I believe. Um, he won game... I won game one. He won game two. Uh, he made a pretty good comeback. And then game three, I won. And there's really not much to highlight there. I basically just went with my exact game plan of the Vampire Lords and the Battle Traps and basically just trying to slowly outpace him with just better cards. Um, and it worked it, it worked pretty straight up. I, there was a point where I was able to snatch, steal, or brain control his monster and tribute it for Vampire Lord. Um, yeah, it went pretty smoothly. Nothing really to comment there. So at that point, I was X and 1. Uh, and then in my round 6, the final round before top cut, I played against Chaos Turbo. Um which I I'm still really I'm I'm not salty but I'm I'm upset at myself because I made a huge misplay. Um, I think the misplay was in game three. What happened was um, he run he won game one, I won game two, he won game three, and I made a huge misplay in game three. But in game one, I went first and I opened absolutely nuts. I opened up Sinister Serpent, Raigeki Break, Metamorphosis, Double Monster Gate. So you can see that that is literally the perfect hand for, for Sinister Serpent. And, you know, I was fully expecting to, to win that game just because I was going to get so much value out of Serpent. But what happened was I went first and set the Raigeki break. And he went and set two back row and one face down monster. And in his end phase, I blind Raigeki break his back row. And I think I hit a mirror force. But the other back row ended up being Trap Dust Shoot. Uh, which he used to put back my Sinister Serpent on my turn. And basically at that point, the rest of my hand was completely dead. And I had to just pass and I ended up losing there. Um, game two, I won with a Dimension Fusion combo. Um, pretty decisive win. And then in game three, I really, really, really messed up. Um, what happened was I opened up with a Democ, so I had a Democ in my hand. Um, at some point in the game... Um, I forgot what, what happened. I summoned a Chaos Sorcerer and then um, attacked into, I think it was Night Ass or no, his Night Assailant was in attack mode. Somehow he, he got a Night Assailant on board and used it to pop my Chaos Monster, I believe, or maybe pop some other card. But uh, his board at the end of his turn was a Night Assailant in attack mode and a face down defense position monster. He had attacked me directly with... He had tried to attack me directly with Night Assailant, and I had 2,100 life, so the Night Assailant would have put me under 2,000 life, which means I wouldn't have been able to use Dimension Fusion. So I used Scapegoat to block the Night Assailant attack. Then on my turn, I top-decked Call of the Haunted 
and I already had a, metamorph a metamorphosis in my hand. My game plan was to make a thousand eyes, take his monster, set the call of the haunted, bring back crane, and the next turn tribute the thousand eyes and the crane for demock, get back to mention fusion, and go for game. That was my game plan. But for whatever reason, which I have no idea, I, I can't I can't explain why other than the fact that I just completely brain farted. I took his face down monster, which ended up being a magician of faith, so it's good that I took it with thousand eyes. And then I attacked into his knight assailant with my zero attack thousand eyes to free up the thousand eyes equip slot. And I think my thought process was that I wanted to do that in case I needed to take another monster with thousand eyes on my following turn, but Obviously, I took the 200 damage from attacking to his attack position, Knight Assailant, which put me under 2,000 life, um, which is exactly what I was avoiding happening, you know, literally a turn before. So I just completely misplayed and threw that. And then, you know, I was able to summon Demok, but I couldn't back, get back Dimension Fusion because it was dead. And I had one more Dimension Fusion in my left, one more Dimension Fusion left in my deck, which was dead. Um, so I basically just completely threw that game and that match. Um, and I ended up X2, ended up 16th place after Swiss, um, so I got to play in Top Cut. And then uh, Top Cut was single round elimination, I played against Chaos Turbo, uh, and the guy I played with played against was undefeated and ended up winning the whole thing. He beat me 2-0. It wasn't, it wasn't like a super, de super decisive 2-0, it was um, a little bit back and forth, but he did beat me 2-0. It was not... A particularly interesting match in in my opinion but uh I didn't, I didn't feel super bad since he ended up winning the whole thing anyway but um yeah that's basically how the whole that's basically how the whole tournament went i had a ton of fun you know this is the first large goat format tournament that i've played in person i've played a couple ones online but i really do enjoy playing in person so much more than i enjoy playing online um, I just find that I play a lot better when I play in person. I have the physical cards in my hand and I can organize them how I like. Uh, when I play online, I end up like misclicking a lot and just doing stupid things. Um, I don't know. I just really like playing in person. And it was also super cool to um, meet a lot of the people who I recognize from, you know, Discord and play online and, uh, you know, get to play with some of them and stuff. So it was it was an awesome time. And I really hope that I have more time in the future to um, attend some of these in-person GOAT format events, but, um, yep, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching as always. Peace.